My channel is officially 10 years old. Good God! What happened to the concept of time? When I started my channel, even YouTube itself wasn't 10 years old. Ironically, I'm nowhere near the oldest channel. Shunter Productions has been around since like 2008, and even he's not the oldest. This is going to be a long video, so I'll try to make it as quick as possible. But to celebrate a full decade on YouTube, here is a documentary about the history of my channel. I grew up with the season 5 to 6 era of Thomas, you know, early 2000s. My history with the show is a large topic, so I'll have to cover it another day, but I think I lost interest originally around 2006. I think season 8 was the last season I saw fully, and I remember seeing Calling All Engines on DVD but never watched it. But it was always in the back of my mind though, and finding episodes on YouTube around late 2008 is what made me regain my interest. It was also here where I discovered fan episodes. Back then, channels like Miss Oliver and Blossom were the big ones, and this was around the tail end of MST Noodles Trains models and the rise of Sodor Island 3D. I got Trains 2006 around this time, and after much extreme difficulty, managed to get some of the SI3D characters to work years later. I got a hold of Frap Screen Recorder and actually did do a few remakes and custom stories. I just used the default route they had in Trains 2006. For narrow gauge episodes, I would just use this old alpine uh, narrow gauge route in the mountains. Of course, they were so amateur that the game controls were still visible in the videos. They were on my old PC, so not much of that stuff still exists, but here's some surviving footage. This particular stuff is from a story I wrote called The Tank Engine Club which is a complete rip-off of MOAB's Secret Tender Club. The remakes were usually finished and put with episode audio, but the original stuff? Not so much. Regardless, none of these ever went public, and I don't think most of them ever will. Some time later, I think Christmas 2010, I got Trains 2010. Unfortunately, my old PC couldn't handle it, so it wasn't until I got a new PC a year or two later that I finally started installing the 2012 stuff. And this is kind of where it was born. 2013 was the first year I uploaded stuff, but I had been doing quite a lot the previous year too. Heck, I tried making a movie in trains. Yeah, it was basically the most typical dark fan Thomas movie you can think of. The main inspiration was from another cancelled fan movie, War on Sodor by Skulls Productions. I might post a video going into more detail about it, but it was basically where the fat controller gets booted out, new steam engine hating guy is put in charge, and he tries to scrap all the engines while Henry and Gordon actually escape to the United States on a boat. Thing is, I never wrote a script for it. It was literally making up the story while going along. You know, filming while making up the story. I'd say I got about 60% filmed before I gave up. What you see now is the only remaining footage. As my computer had to get wiped after a virus, I probably wouldn't have finished it anyway. This was around the summer of 2012. After that, I scaled down, trying to make a series instead. I'd say there were at least five different attempts for a pilot. One was a tornado destroying Sodor, another where Gordon accidentally sinks a grumpy steamboat, both obviously rip-offs of episodes from Enterprising Engine 93. The final attempt that year was an episode about Sidney causing havoc due to his memory loss. This one I actually have a few remaining screenshots of. With Christmas approaching, I decided to put an original series on hold and work on a simpler project to gain my skills, this time a collection of Christmas or winter themed remakes. These were basic remakes of episodes like The Flying Kipper, Thomas and Percy's Christmas Adventure, Snow, etc. The former two were finished, but I never got around to uploading them until the next year. As the new year started, I decided to have a go at some other Trains remakes, particularly ones that at the time had not been done on YouTube. The first one I did was Toby's Discovery, which became the first video ever uploaded to my channel when it was posted on January 12, 2013. 
And thus, Thomas I Edward II Henry III was born. The channel name was literally chosen spontaneously. Henry the Green Engine Productions was already taken, I think. And I just wanted something simple, so yeah, it was just a simple thing I came up with in my head and just put it down. Literally, the same day of the upload, I managed to do another whole episode remake, Horrid Lori, which also got uploaded on January 12th. That just shows how simple I did things back then. But regardless, the episode remakes were giving me experience to finally start my own stories. As I stated before, I had already tried many attempts, and there would be one more before the actual pilot. Only this time, I actually got some voice actors to deliver lines. This episode was basically a rip-off of NWR 1991's episode, Rowdy Singing. It was Henry and some other engines taking some drunk soccer fans home, and the absolute chaos that happens. You know, like the coaches being lit on fire, uh, lots of stuff. It was about 70% filmed before I decided to scrap it, mainly just because I wasn't happy with it, and it was too similar to NWR 1991 story. I then went on to what I had planned to be the second episode, a story about a devious tanker causing trouble. Funny enough, I had always had this idea since I was a child, something that a lot of episodes did. When I was a kid, I always imagined this story of a large fuel tanker causing havoc before Henry did a toad stands by to him. Only unlike Scruffy, who just fell apart, the tanker exploded. Obviously, the story was changed quite a bit from my childhood. Wretch's name was originally Smutty, until I learned what that word meant. Which is ironic considering the smutty language in the early episodes. Yeah, back then my mindset was to make The Engines of Sodor a comedy series for older fans. Kind of like Gary the Steam Engine if you ever saw that. Thomas, it's four in the morning! But not quite on that level. Definitely juvenile though. My rule was that I'd never use a word worse than shit. More on that later. So yeah, A Wretched Day for Henry and James was uploaded on June 13th, 2013. Story-wise, I think it was pretty decent. As far as technical aspects, yeah, no. <laughs> this was the only episode where I used that horrible 2007 microphone. When I did the next episode, I used a Logitech webcam where the audio was much better. Gordon Goes Swimming was uploaded a month later. It was originally uploaded in two parts, because back then I couldn't upload videos over 15 minutes. Again, I think the general story is okay, but I cringe when watching the original now, particularly with the bad language. You can see why I wanted to do those remastered episodes. I did the next three episodes throughout the summer and fall of that year, and I managed to get some big stars as voice actors, like Enterprising Engine 93, and believe it or not, Sam the Train Fan, who of course back then was known as something like, I think it was Curdy Lara. He voiced Bill and Ben in episode 4, and it was the only time he did as I guess he went off YouTube for a while afterwards. Mike Takes the Road, episode 5, got inspiration from when I visited the Ravenglass and Estdale Railway in England that summer. After episode 5 was up, I decided to take a break from the episodes to work on two specials, the first was an extended adaptation of my all-time favorite episode, Haunted Henry, uploaded in two parts. This was heavily inspired by Shunter Productions' extended adaptation of Duncan Gets Spooked. I don't look back on the technical and screenwriting of this fondly. I mean, the truck singing Thriller and that stupid Diesel 10 stuff. Yeah, but... I think the general story was otherwise great. Many people pointed that out too, so as you all know, I had another go many years later. After Halloween, I began working on my very first Christmas special. Thomas' parodies of A Christmas Carol had already been done so many times, so I decided to attempt another Christmas classic, How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. It was split into three parts across December. I actually don't know what the general consensus is among you guys, but for me, I think this is without a doubt the worst thing I've put up. I haven't watched the full movie in years because I just cringe thinking about it. 
It was at the time where Matt Smith left Doctor Who and regenerated into Peter Capaldi, so I was on this Doctor Who craze, which is clearly evident in the video. Diesel regenerated from a 2006 Trains model to, its, to SI3D's new 2012 one. If you guys like it, then good. I would be fascinated to hear why. Please tell me why. For me, I just think it was the most bizarre and batshit crazy thing I ever did. With all the stuff like Magical Lady and Diesel 10 as a hallucination, the engines dressing up in costumes, the most generic inspirational speech with Hans Zimmer music, and the extremely poorly placed crude jokes, especially at the end. You can see why I don't consider this canon to any of my other work, but you live and learn. As the new year started, I resumed the engines of Sodor with episode 6, Stuck. Again, this was one I was not too proud of given how immature it was, hence the remastered edition years later. The next two episodes I have mixed thoughts on. Even though the mystery of Vengeance Unknown was obvious, it was fun to write in a popular, long-lost character who we knew not much about. His story in the next episode, however, I thought was a bit too over-ambitious and downright depressing. Uh, I had just seen the movie Captain Phillips, so that inspired me to put Neil in Somalia. Also, just a note, the set of India is literally just a default Australian harbor from trains. <laughs> I've never been to India, so I'm sorry if I made too much of a... I don't know, cultural... simplification? <laughs> yeah, I apologize. Episode 9 was another story I'd made up as a child. At the time, the only TV-style model of Daisy was SI3D's 2006 one, and this didn't have the ability to change faces, which would be difficult since this episode requires a lot of moving shots. I used a Railway Series-style one I found on DeviantArt. I believe the creator was the German Engine? Not German of Sodor, but it was the same guy who also made that Herald model. This was one of the first episodes that came to mind when I thought about remastering earlier episodes, for that particular reason. To finish up this first season, I decided to make an epic heist story involving the narrow gauge engines, and thus came Attack of the Railway Pirates. Released in two parts, it was, again, inspired by the movie Captain Phillips. Although I hadn't thought of it at the time, Elements from this episode would be linked to the Engines of Sodor finale five years later. As for why Thitkins has a different accent, well, it's because the voice actor in the final gave an American accent, and I just didn't want to have to go through the effort of having him redo all the lines. So, yeah, sorry about that. Think of it like the same logic of Diesel 10. Of course, since my seasons were not filmed all together like a real TV season, I was able to just transition into Season 2 with the next episode I made, Toad the Lucky Brake Van. At the time, Croven was my first original engine character, which is no longer accurate because, well, you all know what happens. Again, as a child, I had this idea of the Sodor government having a private engine. I always imagined it as the locomotive Gladstone from the National Railway Museum in York, and his name was Jordan. But I didn't have that trains model, so I just used a railway series Henry. A lot of people commented on how Croven was too similar to Spencer, so naturally I had a rivalry between the two in the back of my mind for a future episode. The next episode, The Road Rebel with Rollers, is another story I had since I was a child. Only instead of George, the character was a grey steamroller that was basically Trevor with a roller. His name? Buddy. Yeah, I don't know how I came up with that, but his design was based on a steamroller at a museum in my town. That's where a lot of my inspirations would come from in real life. This is probably my favorite episode I ever did. There's just something so fun about having a steamroller hit by a train. <laughs> I was not a normal child. And this is an episode I'm actually working on remaking, not to like improve it, but you know, I just think it'd be fun to do it in the modern train style. The next two episodes feature D199 returning. And episode 14's title is a play on the Bridge of Khazad-dum from Lord of the Rings. 
Nowadays, I don't think that connection is as easy to recognize as I thought it would be, but oh well. There was a large gap between episode 14 and 15, about three months, and that was just due to extreme writer's block. Something that was starting to hit me pretty bad. And then, of course, I came up with Special Engines, an episode I'm not too proud of, but again, I'd be curious to hear what you guys think. The last episode I got out that year was the famous Eyes episode, another one of my favorites. It served as this year's Halloween special, and was also the last Engines of Sodor episode uploaded for over a year and a half. Like I did with Season 1, I'd planned to resume Season 2 after the Christmas special. Search for Smudger was a four-part special that explained the whereabouts of a minor character from the TV series that me and a lot of fans were intrigued by. Looking back at the movie, I think the overall plot was brilliant, with Duke losing his core values and rage over Smudger being preserved over him. I just think I made Smudger slash Bertram's story way too complicated. I really want to do a remake of this movie, but I have to decide whether I want to get new voice actors or, you know, if I want to do it in trains or wooden railway, like Haunted Henry. The final part of that special was uploaded in January 2015, and boy, I was exhausted. I'd originally planned to continue with Season 2 of TOS, but by that time, Writer's Block had pretty much taken over. Months went by of me trying to figure out what to do. The Spencer vs. Croven rivalry was one of the ideas, but I just could not put it to screen with the low mental bandwidth I had. Finally, I decided to just put the series on an indefinite hold. This was the year of the 70th anniversary, so I had a few other projects in mind. 